Now that it seems that most have joined us, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Before I hand it over to Henry Ralsvik to take us through the topic, a quick reminder to please submit any questions via the Q&A panel during the presentation. Once Henry finishes, I'll come back on the line and we'll address as many of these as we can live and follow up offline as well. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Henry, who will start us off with today's webinar, The Power of Integration, Adobe Campaign, and Adobe Experience Manager. Thanks, Sabrina. So as she had mentioned, my name is Henry Rosvick. I am the Adobe Experience Manager Practice Lead here at Munvo, um, and Sabrina is being our mod moderator today. Uh, the topics I wanted to cover are just some of the uh, issues you may experience when using Adobe Campaign and Adobe Experience Manager. And I wanted to talk about uh, just a brief overview of what these two tools are, in case you're not familiar, um, how they may be integrated together and what the data flow of that looks like. Um, and then I'll walk you through some, uh, some use cases that uh, this integration would enable, and then go over the benefits uh, of this integration uh, holistically across your organization. Before I dive into that, just a bit about Munvo. Uh, Munvo is a uh, digital marketing services uh, provider. Uh, we have over 100 uh, consultants and developers across our three offices in Canada. Uh, we also cover various practices, so Adobe, Unica, Salesforce, and SaaS. And we have over 15 years of experience in the MarTech space. So here's some... Uh, issues that you may have encountered when using Adobe Campaign, so those include manual HTML updates. Uh, so this is something where, you know, each time you have a campaign, someone's coming in uh, manually copying over or manually developing HTML for those campaign email campaigns. Uh, and this is something that can cause, you know, significant time to do, and it also is a vector for errors and inaccuracies. Uh, in, in addition to that, uh, with this copying uh, and, and rebuilding every time, you couldn't run into issues with inconsistent branding. Uh, and this is something where there's a danger to maintaining your brand if there's inconsistencies between campaigns. Uh, and there is some difficulty in that if you don't have the right tools. Uh, finally, there's also issues where you have, may have assets kind of sitting all over your environments, all over your enterprise. Uh, you don't have a centralized store or your store is rather uh, difficult to navigate, uh, say like a, a, a file share drive or something like that. Uh, and this can cause some issues with versioning, uh, making multiple locations, uh, and this is a, something that AEM does help solve. So quick overview uh, of Adobe Experience Manager. This is a comprehensive content management solution, uh, and this includes a digital asset management, uh, digital enrollment and forms, uh, if that's what your uh, solution needs. Uh, it also includes a very powerful site manager, including uh, custom templates uh, and modular components. And this is something that can be integrated as a on-premise solution or a cloud service through, uh, through Adobe. Adobe Campaign on the other side is a uh, platform designed for cross-channel customer experiences. Uh, so this has integrated email and mobile uh, cross-channel campaign orchestration, uh, real-time interaction management, uh, targeted segmentation, and integrated customer profiles. Uh, and this is also a solution that can be either on-premise or in the cloud. Uh, both of these solutions do include uh, a lot of out-of-the-box integrations with existing Adobe Experience Cloud solutions, such as Adobe Target, Adobe Audience Manager, uh, and things like that. So talking about the integration between Experience Manager and Campaign, uh, what we have initially is our two environments. Maybe you don't have, maybe you have one, maybe you have the other, maybe you have both. Um, but to integrate these solutions, initially there's a, a content sync between them. So Adobe Experience Manager to enable uh, creating content for Adobe Campaign will pull in schema information from Adobe Campaign so that it knows you know, what fields you may be interested in personalizing in your emails, uh, and then building those into the, the email templates. On the other side, Adobe Campaign will be able to pull in the developed uh, HTML emails that Adobe Experience Manager puts together. Uh, and from there, it will, you know, run through the, the normal workflow process that you may already have in Adobe Campaign, 
and render those email deliveries out to your channels, uh, be that desktop, mobile, uh, and, and what else you might be using. Uh, to leverage the uh, power of Adobe Experience Manager as well, instead of delivering assets uh, through a different channel, assets come directly from Adobe Experience Manager. So if you have images in your emails, if you have links to forms and things like that, uh, those can link out to Adobe Experience Manager directly. And then you're leveraging the, the load balancing and, and asset management side of Adobe Experience Manager at the same time. So there's two use cases I wanted to cover today in the demo. Uh, the first one is email delivery templates. So as I was mentioning, Adobe Experience Manager is able to generate the uh, email templates for you uh, using uh, um, their modular components through the sites, uh, AEM sites. Um, and this also allows you to build personalized and branded email templates. In uh, the other use case I wanted to cover, <clears throat> excuse me, was integrated web applications. So this is creating dynamic web apps that hook into the schemas in Adobe Campaign to allow you to control uh, things like subscriptions, uh, unsubscribe pages, uh, et cetera. Okay, just give me a moment here and I'll switch over to the demo. So I've logged into this, the Adobe Experience Manager instance that I have set up for this. Uh, so this is the main screen uh, that you would see with uh, Adobe Experience Manager 6.4 or 6.5. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go into the campaign that we've put together for, uh, for this demo and then create an email template for you to, to see. So what I'm gonna do is use a pre-built uh, template that I put together as well. And this is something where you're at, email developers or your uh, development team would put this together prior to uh, prior to the marketers coming in to actually create this email like I am doing. So I'm going to give it a title and say it's our webinar demo email for today. We'll go ahead and open that up. So here we see uh, the template that I put together with the sections where we're able to drop components in. Uh, on the left side, we're able to open up uh, the side panel, and this gives us access to the assets that are in our system, uh, as well as any of the components that we've already built, uh, in addition to a content tree, if you're interested in seeing what the, uh, the structure is. So what I'll do is I'll add in some components. So I've built these components for this demo as well, just to add some additional features. And this is something that you can do on top of any of the core components that comes with uh, Adobe Experience Manager. So I'm going to add in some personalization blocks and what I'll do is I'll modify these and uh, what we've exposed is first of all what color do we want the text to be and as well as a, a rich text editor so we can kind of have any sort of styling we want um, and what this does is it exposes this styling options to the author, the email authors, without having to have them uh, know what the HTML would need to look like or be able to actually have to write HTML. They don't need the technical knowledge uh, to do this. So in addition with this uh, text color here, uh, we've added in some on-brand colors so that we're not, you know, exposing this to, uh, you know, mismatched colors and whatnot. Maybe things aren't exactly what you want for your brand. Uh, you can actually limit that to specifically the on-brand colors that you're looking for. So I'll go ahead and just add um, a quick note for this email. I'm gonna say thank you for attending. Um, and what I'll also do here is I will make this a heading and center it. And if we save this, now that text with the color we picked and the, the size and the alignment we wanted, it appears within the component. I haven't had to write any HTML or CSS to make to enable this. Um, and the component will actually build the correct HTML in the back end when it goes to Adobe Campaign. Another portion we're able to add in with the Adobe Campaign integration is personalization blocks. So if we wanted to add something like a first name uh, or a named content, 
uh, we can just pull in with the Adobe Campaign Link button here. We're able to pull in the variables that are uh, in the Adobe Campaign Schema. Uh, so this way, again, we're not having to know what these are uh, beforehand. They're just going to be written in and uh, filled in for us. So I'm going to pick first name for this example. Um, and it'll put the tag that Adobe Campaign expects directly in our email. And now, we're, again, we're not having to write this ourselves. All right. I'll just add that content in. So now uh, here's just the really basic email that I wanted to put together. Um, we're also able to see a quick preview within AEM prior to even going into Adobe Campaign. So if you needed an additional proofing process uh, before this gets sent out to Adobe Campaign to kind of uh, speed this up, there's just a preview field. And this will show you what this looks like in a browser. Uh, I know this isn't necessarily what a uh, email client would look like. Stuff, stuff like Gmail or Outlook may render them differently. Uh, however, this is an initial uh, proofing process to kind of speed up that and make sure that uh, you know, at least it looks sane. The HTML is, in theory, correct as far as we can see. Um, and as long as the components that you had built had been developed correctly and proofed initially with that initial development effort, uh, you don't need any additional development effort to uh, continue using this template. All right. So now this is built, I'm able to see this in Adobe Campaign. Um, but first, we're going to need to uh, approve this. So uh, part of this process is uh, any content that's built here would need to be approved within AEM prior to it being available uh, for use in Adobe Campaign. Uh, it is visible in Adobe Campaign, but if we don't approve it here, it won't actually work through the, uh, through the process. It will error out saying that it needs to be approved. So I'll show you what that looks like after I approve it here. So there's an out-of-the-box workflow for approving for Adobe Campaign. Um, and this is something that is fully customizable. So if there's a approval process that you want to follow within uh, within AEM prior to things being available, uh, you can customize that as you need. Uh, or we could even uh, lim reduce how much approval is needed, and maybe you know it's a one click one click setup instead of the couple steps that it is with the out of the box uh, workflow. That is something that's uh, completely changeable. So I'm just going to mark this as approved. Uh, and that workflow will go through. All right. Now I'll switch over to Adobe Campaign and we'll see what that looks like on the Adobe Campaign side. Uh, so we set up a, a, D, a basic workflow to kind of show what this would look like. Uh, on the left here, we just have our quick subscribers uh, to our newsletter that we're pulling in from our database and we'll send this over to an email delivery template. So I'll actually stop this and, and rebuild this delivery just to show you how this connection would work. I'll go ahead and remove this. So I'll pull in a email delivery uh, from our drawer here and go into it. And in campaign, uh, we've built a delivery template for AEM already. Uh, so this delivery template uh, contains the connection information for our uh, AEM instance. Uh, and that way we're not having to, to reconfigure it every single time we want to create an AEM email. So I'll go ahead and continue here. And what this connection does is it enables us to uh, synchronize our content with Adobe Experience Manager. So we have this synchronize button here. Uh, so what I can do is click synchronize and it'll list out all of the emails that are available in our AEM instance. It'll also give us the status of those uh, emails, as well as whether or not they've been linked to a delivery already. Uh, so as you can see, this is the email that we just created. Uh, it was last modified you know, a couple minutes ago. Uh, the status is approved and it's not linked. So if we were to try and use something here, like the non-approved one, we would be able to pull it in, but we would see an error saying that it is not approved. Uh, like right here where it says AM content approved, it would you know have an X and say it's not, and then eventually it would it would fail if you tried to run this. So there's no danger in sending out unapproved content uh, from AEM. 
So once this is linked up and we hit refresh content, we should see our email get pulled in to the HTML content viewer in Adobe Campaign. Uh, and this is exactly what we've built in our uh, in AEM on our page. Uh, so we're able to see, again, like the source code, this is all built through uh, AEM. Uh, we didn't have to write any of this uh, in this process. And we can also preview that personalization and make sure that it's working as expected. So we see we have our first name coming through. Um, and as if you, if you noticed before, we had a um, unsubscribe view that we put, put in, uh, and now that also shows up on the bottom. Sorry about some of the styling. We didn't necessarily make it the prettiest thing, but uh, it is it is functional. All right. Uh, one more thing I will do here is I will disable some of the approvals on the campaign side just to speed this process up. All right. Uh, and finally, I'll hook up my subscribers to this uh, delivery template, and we'll go ahead and send this email out. All right. So we go back to our dashboard here and take a look. Okay, so I paused it on confirmation, so we're not actually sending it out to uh, everybody that's in our subscribers. So what we'll do instead is send a proof, and then I'll show you what that looks like uh, when we receive it on the uh, in an email client. I'll select myself as a substitute, um, and we will use a profile, a specific profile, so we can show you uh, the unsubscribe as well. Just give me a few moments to run through this. All right, and we'll confirm this and send it out. Excellent. Uh, let me just open up my email. It's somewhere. Sorry, let me find where this went. There we go. Oh, I seem to have logged myself out of Gmail, so if you give me one second, I will log myself in on the other screen. There we are. Okay, so if I pull this up, I have opened up the uh, the proof email that we just sent out. As you see, I just received this uh, zero minutes ago. Uh, and this email looks exactly like we had uh, designed it in AEM. All the HTML came through and it looks like everything worked as expected. Um, we're getting the personalization correctly, we're getting the styling correctly, uh, and we're also getting the unsubscribe button as expected. So if I go ahead and, uh, so that is the demo, sorry, for the templated emails. Uh, now I wanted to look at what the web forms might look like. So if I switch back to our AEM instance, we've built two web forms, uh, or a web form and a web form confirmation page uh, that handle what this web form would look like for the uh, unsubscribe options. So if I go in and look at this, uh, what we're able to do is build out a page uh, in Adobe Experience Manager, um, and because this is going to be a web page, we could actually, you know, expand this into uh, additional features. You know, we'd be able to handle JavaScript. We'd be able to handle. Um, we don't necessarily have to do inline CSS like you would in an email. Uh, kind of opens you up to a broader set of of possibilities when you're doing forms. Uh, but this one we've kind of just kept pretty simple within the same uh, template, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, with a uh, AEM form like this, uh, there is a couple extra um, components that we need to pull in for uh, setting up the form. So I didn't want to uh, waste your time watching me type in a whole bunch of stuff. So I've already set it up prior to this. Uh, so the initial things that we are, are specific to Adobe Campaign is this uh, encrypted primary key field. So what this does, this is a hidden field that lets us set up um, a URL parameter that will get pulled into the form, which is the primary key for this person uh, within the Adobe Campaign um, system. So in that view that we had built in, in the URL, it actually gives us this encrypted primary key in the URL as a parameter, and then this pulls it into the form so that when we update the subscriptions, it gets sent back. And then it's transparent to the users as to how that's working. Or uh, opaque to the user, I guess, the opposite of that, so not visible. Um, so what this does is this subscriptions box connects with Adobe Campaign, 
uh, as a subscriptions. Um, so there is some options here to change the title. Uh, you can add some extra styling. We just kept it pretty basic for the demo. Um, but this is a an out of the box component that uses some of the 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 Java APIs that Adobe provides for a campaign connection. Um, this opens up the possibility with that API to kind of build whatever sort of um, system of updating schemas you might want to build into web form. Say you wanted to put something for internal users that did more of a um, like internal management, but you didn't want to necessarily expose Adobe campaign. That's something that could be done through this as well, um, or maybe a more broad of subscription uh, updating preference center or something like that uh, would be possible with this integration as well, uh, just with a little bit of pre-work. So I've set up this form uh, again through this, and what we'll do is we'll switch back to that email and I'll go to this form as an end user would see it. Uh, so we have our unsubscribe link, uh, so we'll click on that and that will open us up into our published environment for uh, AEM. AEM has the two uh, two environments: the author environment, where we build the content, and then the publish environment, where the the finalized proof content is sent, um, and it's more of a, a read only system. Uh, so what I'm going to be able to do here is change my subscriptions, um, but I just wanted to show you that this actually does work as as we're describing it here. So I'll show you what the subscriptions are currently in Adobe Campaign. So we have our, uh, actually go to recipients instead. So we're using Mackenzie here as our as our guinea pig for this uh, subscription test. And we can see that in, our, in his subscriptions, he's currently subscribed to just the newsletter. Um, so what we can do is switch back to our web form um, and we'll say, you know what, I'm actually just gonna unsubscribe him from everything just in case, because as an end user, you're not really sure. So we'll just say unsubscribe. And what this will do is this will forward us to a confirmation page that we also built, and that's configurable within uh, within that form on the front end. Um, and then now that this has been submitted, if we switch back to Adobe Campaign and we refresh this page, we can see that now the subscription has been removed from McKenzie, um, and that was all done through the web form within Adobe Experience Manager. All right, so those are the two use cases that I wanted to cover in today's demo. Uh, so the next thing is I wanted to talk about the benefits of what this integration would be. So as you can see, we have uh, you know modular components and templates that we're able to build our uh, emails out of, uh, and this takes advantage of um, you know reusable, reusable components, it speeds up your time to market, and it reduces a lot of errors from copying HTML um, or uh, having to manually type in, you know, complicated details. Uh, so this would actually reduce your development overhead as well um, and helps you create those compelling experiences without having those ongoing development costs. Um, and with that, you'll have greater productivity. Uh, teams using assets and sites have seen up to 19 to 23% higher productivity. Uh, and something that I uh, didn't touch on directly was the powerful asset management available in Adobe Experience Manager. So as you could see, we had the logo in the top um, that is something where uh, that is coming directly from AEM assets. And if we needed to have, uh, you know, all of your assets housed there, uh, you're able to do your own approval workflows directly on those, um, as well as having, uh, you know, a centralized store for your assets uh, with versioning, with approvals, with um, uh, renditions and things like that. If you needed different sizes for different uh, channels, that's all available in the digital asset management uh, solution within AEM. Um, and then finally with the, like the color swatching, that's just a really basic example of making sure we're maintaining our branding across our campaigns and making sure it's consistent. So by using the, the setup templates, like the predefined templates, we're able to maintain, like this is exactly how we want an email to look across all of our emails. You know, you use the same template and then you don't have to worry about, you know, people copying stuff over incorrectly. Okay, uh, that's it for my presentation. So I'm gonna hand it back over to Sabrina uh, to look at any of the questions. Thanks, Henry, and great job. We received a number of questions throughout the presentation. So thank you all for sending those in. Henry, if you're ready, let's get started. Sure. 
So the first one we've got here is how long does it take to get started using Adobe Experience Manager with Adobe Campaign? Sure. Um, Cause with Adobe, with both of these solutions, like the integration is out of the box. So uh, it's pretty quick to set up if you already have an existing AEM or a, Adobe Campaign instance. Um, there is a little bit of technical work to get the the templates set up because there will be uh, you need to make sure the connections are there and that the the integrations are correct for each of your templates. Um, however, the the setup time is not is not significant depending on the you know the use cases that you're looking at. If it's like a one or two campaigns that you're starting with, I, I could see this being set up within you know a month or two uh, pretty easily. We have another question here. Um, this one is. Are there any infrastructure considerations to be taken into account when integrating AEM with Adobe Campaign? Um, like if, if we're talking about uh, sizing of the environments and things like that, the the environments, like the, since these are out of the box um, integrations, they're just utilizing the tool, the uh, the system that. Uh, AEM and ACC are already using. So we're not necessarily using additional um, processing power ab above and beyond what it's already doing, uh, depending on, obviously on, on how much throughput you're putting through this. But in terms of, of connecting these two environments, as long as they can talk to each other through uh, HTTP um, or HTTPS, depending on how you set it up, um, th there's no concerns in terms of um, in infrastructure that you would need to wor worry about above and beyond like sizing and making sure they can talk to each other. Nice. And um, the next question is, can segmentation in Adobe Campaign impact the content personalization on Adobe Experience Manager? Um, absolutely. Uh, as you've seen, the personalization blocks available within uh, Adobe Campaign are, you know, exposed to Adobe Experience Manager, so you have that initial um, ability to kind of segment that. So the segmentation engine in uh, Adobe Campaign kind of takes care of a lot of that, um, you know, targeting where the emails are going. So that's still handled within Adobe Campaign. AEM isn't necessarily taking on any of that with the, the basic integration, um, but there is a an available integration with Adobe Target for both of these systems um, that allows you to kind of use Adobe Target as a segmentation engine uh, for both of them. So if you're using um, just AEM for sites, for example, and you're not necessarily integrating directly with Adobe Campaign, uh, you can have a target integration that allows you to do targeted, um, targeted content on your website directly using Adobe Target as your engine. Um, but if you're talking about just emails, uh, Adobe Campaign takes care of that, or Adobe Target on behalf of Adobe Campaign, but that's handled on the the campaign side more so. Finally, we have one more question here. Our final question is: How does this integration help provide a more consistent customer experience? So, so what this does is it removes the need to um, like copy things over, like mainly for copying HTML, like if you're pre-building HTML and you know it's you know it's good, you know you've tested it thoroughly, um, and then your users are just using this, um, using those pre-built templates and pre-built components uh, that you put together, then you know that they work together, assuming you've done the testing for it. Um, and so you can reduce the time that it takes to, to put out campaigns, and you can know that they're consistent because you're using these pre-built components that people don't necessarily have access to to modify aside from the um, like the, the handles that you expose through the dialogues in AEM. Um, so, so you can maintain that consistency, like you can only expose the options that you want, whereas with like editing HTML, somebody could type in like a color wrong and then it's the wrong thing or they, you know, miss miss some sort of uh, like ending brace in HTML or something. And now your email's broken and it got sent out to a million people and you have you know, a branding crisis on your hands. So, th so there's things where uh, this kind of handles that, reduces that risk in in throwing inconsistent things out into the into the wild, um, uh, by by maintaining that uh, those templates. Excellent.
Well, we've just about run out of time. If we didn't address your question live during the webinar, we'll reach out to you shortly. Otherwise, please don't hesitate to contact us on menbo.com or via LinkedIn. Thanks again for joining and have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much, everyone.